the story of um, of Abraham demonstrates the uh, the process of a battle. It's actually a a life uh, a life experience of the process through which um, spiritual warfare uh, occurs. And um, this is what I've been talking about now. I've spoken ab- uh, spoken about the um, the ancient wars uh, between the great angels the powers of darkness that eventually sit into the earth through the fallen angels corrupted the creation upon the earth and here we are fighting the same battles that um, the angels of the almighty are fighting i will not go through the process uh, of um, the coming forth of evil again because i've done that over and over again but today I'm more interested with the with spiritual warfare, citing the story of Abraham. Now, when Abraham uh, was called from his land, he was coming from a land of Ur, a land uh, which was given to other um, other practices that um, or probably at the area of around uh, Sumeria, which, uh, if you follow back in history, was, um, was the place that was settled by the, uh, the angels that came down. So he was told, uh, go to a land that I will show you. And this is exactly what happens. Now, um, the Lord... Uh, has given us a lot of gifts. We are born with a lot of gifts. Like I said before, we are part um, of the experience of the Almighty uh, on the universe. He brought us forth by manifesting himself. That means that there is no human who is without a gift. So if um, you're in one of those churches which um, have limited the gifts of God into uh, very few categories and tell the rest of the people oh your job is just to give money or just to do what they're lying to you every man has a spiritual gift because every man is an expression of the almighty even the evil are an expression of the darkness that the goodness of the lord um, stands against okay so everybody on this earth is manifesting the power of God in one way or another. If you want to learn about the power of God, learn about the power of men. Start there. So what happened with Abraham? Uh, By telling uh, Abraham to leave uh, the land of his fathers, um, I would would, would liken it um, to having... um, having a gift that is possessed uh, by somebody else. For example, it's written that this, the earth is under the sea of the wicked. The earth is ruled by rulers of darkness, called rulers of this world. The reason why they're called rulers is they have authority not just over men, not just over lands, but authority over the lands of people. That's why if you look um, at the epics, for example, of the, uh, the gods, or the Greeks, or the gods of the ancient people. Even in Africa, gods were not associated uh, with uh, a people like today as much as they were associated with specific powers that specific gods were um, expected to execute. That's because the land was ruled by powers, by princes, angels, who um, had not kept uh, their places of abode by intruding upon the earth. So, um, when the Lord uh, called Abraham out of his land, he was separating him first from um, his people and uh, from the powers that uh, he was subjugated to and could not rise above because in his household, uh, there was already a, there was already a, a order in which uh, the spiritual rule had been established. Like I said, it was in the area of um, 
the early uh, Sumerians around that area occupied by the angels and men who later mixed with them and their children. So when um, Abraham left, went um, to Canaan, he stayed amongst um, a people that uh, were not necessarily hostile towards him, but uh, they were also um, not his people. And that's exactly what happens when the Lord um, wants to give you something, wants to give you a gift, wants to give you, to usher you into your new, um, into your new uh, possession, your new gift, or your new, uh, what they call anointing or power. He will send you to the place where that gift is. He will send you to the place where that power is. He will send you to the place where the glory that is meant for you is only that it is in possession of your haters. It's in possession of people who are not willing to let go. So the first phase of that battle was soaking, soaking in that territory. And that's what um, Abraham did in the land of Canaan. He stayed there, bought land, planted himself there. And um, also this happens um, in our uh, normal lives. If um, you find yourself um, in the midst of a situation that is not really comfortable or out of place, in a place of resistance, surrounded by animosity, especially animosity, that's usually the greatest sign that you're a threat to the heritage of that place. For, um, for the people who are born uh, in families that um, spent their entire energies trying to destroy you, it's because you're a threat. It's not because you didn't do your chores properly, not because um, you didn't love somebody uh, properly. It's not because you did not measure up. It's because you measured up to the task. And those who had eyes perceived you as an enemy. So, whenever you're in a place surrounded by enemies, your enemies actually reveal um, your heritage. So you should not be quick um, to discard or to run away from that place because you'll be running away from your heritage. Also, uh, don't uh, be so quick to fight back. Let the iniquities, let the iniquities pile up like uh, Abraham did. It's written that uh, the Lord um, had to wait for the iniquity of the uh, Canaanites to come to their fullness and for uh, Abraham and his descendants to take over that land. Those people needed to do something um, upon which Abraham would react and his reaction would dispossess them of their land. So if Abraham just rose and went straight to those people, he may not have won for because one, he did not know um, about the strengths and the weaknesses of his enemies. And two, those people had not interacted with Abraham enough to trigger um, vengeance on behalf of Abraham. And when you're uh, dealing with people um, who have unclean spirits, just uh, let them be. Let them be. They're very good at uh, digging their own graves. Give them enough rope and they will tie it up. They'll tie themselves up in it, tie their entire families uh, with that rope. They will destroy um, their entire heritage upon this earth if you give them time. So it's very important to be patient. Don't be so quick to jump into uh, battles. Let them trigger uh, what is referred to as karma. Then by the spirit um, of vengeance that uh, descends to um, avenge their sins, their destruction uh, will be according to um, according to the multitudes of their sins. 
that's why you'll never find me uh, telling past somebody you've wronged me. If I ever tell somebody uh, that they've wronged me, it's a person that I do not consider um, my heritage. It's a person that I consider misguided and um, probably lost because they're meddling um, in a path that does not belong to them. And so, um, for everybody who is surrounded by uh, their enemies, let it be a decree that they've become your heritage from the moment they sat in their councils, from the moment they met under the cover of darkness, to apportion your heritage amongst themselves. So, so shall it be. Uh, their portion shall be taken away and a portion to another one. Let another take their place. After a while, um, when Abraham uh, had settled in the land of um, Canaan, there reached a time when um, the land itself, the land of Canaan, pushed him out by reason of um, famine, pushed him out into Egypt. He came back um, and prospered again. And when he was um, in the land of uh, Canaan, he increased in power, he increased um, in possessions to the extent that uh, the surrounding kings acknowledged him. They recognized his, uh, his uh, office of priesthood. Remember when... Um, he went to deliver the kings, the five kings, uh, f uh, who had been taken captive after a war, including Lot. When he came back, he gave a tithe to uh, Melchizedek, who was a king too, a priest. And um, by that time, uh, Abraham had uh, numerous slaves, had numerous, his household uh, was, uh, was something uh, that the, uh, the surrounding villages had to contend with. Now, the story of, um, of Jacob is also uh, similarly a depiction of spiritual warfare. A depiction of um, the spirit of the Pharaoh uh, or bondage by uh, the kinds of enemies who... Uh, are very relentless that the only way of uh, freeing yourself from the bondage is their utter destruction. So when the children of Jacob went into Egypt, they went because of a famine. They stayed there for 400 years. When they had gone gladly because uh, somebody um, of their bloodline had invited them by the name of Joseph. The rulership that knew their story passed and they ended up um, surrounded by uh, enemies in the land that had been uh, previously um, friendly to them, became hostile. Soon they were converted into slaves. And it seemed like a dream that they had a heritage that the Almighty had spoken of and had um, presented in uh, a very beautiful uh, depiction of their heritage. And this is um, a depiction of wars that you may find yourself where the environment uh, that you're in may have been um, may have been conducive to begin with. You may have been amongst your friends, but your friends had another side to them that you could not see until the, the season changes. These are the uh, friends that change with the seasons, that they will be your friend until the season changes. And then the house that they've given you shall turn into a prison and you'll be under house arrest. This happens spiritually too, where um, a person can uh, bind you in a confined place just so that they can um, make use of your, um, of your gifts and of your energy. And to um, if you ever find yourself uh, locked in a room 
uh, that you or just um, in a uh, deeply de- depleted um, enclosure that you seem maybe asleep in it or you seem to have stayed in it for so long in your dream that is usually a sign of being in that kind of bondage in a feral kind of bondage where um, probably sometimes these are usually your friends who are practicing uh, good when you're looking at them good in quotes another fall of darkness witchcraft is their portion because that is witchcraft now um and it is bondage serious bondage that you should not ignore if you ever dream of it now um what happened uh, is that when moses uh, went uh, after 400 years he received the word of the lord and this is important to have counsel or to have that uh, prompting and the prompting uh, usually come in the form of uh, just the need to or just having something to say if you ever have something to say about your situation say it if you ever uh, find uh, yourself uh, with a thought about about your um, situation which is uh, maybe a spiritual situation don't hold your tongue because that's usually a sign that your angels are ready to fight for it. So what Moses saw in that burning bush was a demonstration of a power that had descended to execute the sword and to free his people from that 400-year bondage. And he went before Pharaoh by the power of that angel. That is the power that he was speaking with when he released the 10 plagues and some of these bondages, they need to see a demonstration of the power of God. You should not cease bringing upon this, um, these spirits that keep you in bondage. Address them directly. Declare to them the word of God. And not just the word of God, but also decree. Decree their punishment. Release fire rain upon them and plagues upon them until they're completely um, disinherited and this is what happened with the house of pharaoh this was the point of the killing of the house uh, the firstborn it was the a disinheritance of um, of egypt that throne came to an end at the time of Moses because there was no longer uh, somebody to take after the throne so it had to move to the next line so it is written that on that day Moses executed vengeance on the gods of Egypt because gods and um, principalities and rulers and kings are kind of one thing morph into each other Every bondage, every spirit that has put you in bondage, let the bondage be theirs. Every pain that has been uh, occasioned by the spirits of darkness, may that pain be turned around to the households of these evil spirits. Every year of um, heritage that has been taken away by reason of the bondage, let it be paid upon those that bind you in darkness. Let it be taken from their portion. Let their thrones recompense for it. And he who has sat in false judgments against you, against me too. By the power of that same word, by the power of that accusation, I submit a petition against them 
let them be judged by the same sword for it is written that he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword so um, what is uh, very interesting about uh, battles is that most of the time the enemies will bring the weapons that will destroy them so let their weapons arise arise against their own heads Let the provider who, have, who has given us provisions rise against he who has sought to withhold our God's provisions from our hands. And the same accusations that he has petitioned against us in the high places, let them judge against them. So, um, you see, it was only after Moses arose by counsel with the Lord giving him pronouncements that he was able to rebuke Egypt. He was able to take vengeance and to escape. Bondage will not depart so long as you do nothing because the devil is very mischievous. And he will try to hold on beyond his season. So just because you're under attack doesn't mean it's a season where you should be under attack. Just because um, someone is attacking you doesn't mean it's their season to attack. I've seen some people uh, try the craziest forms of attacks just um, with the just to try and see if it will succeed, regardless um, of the fact that they will probably have the most to lose if it was turned against them. So that is how the devil um, works. He never stops trying. So don't relax and say that you're waiting for your day. Your day is waiting for you. In fact, your day is already with you. For some people, um, the heavens are waiting on you to make uh, to make you move, you have the uh, the counsel to war, which is a prompting that is coming out of your heart. But you prefer to sit and to weep and to say it's okay. That is not from God. It's lazy. 